Hey guys, welcome to the 30th part in this Python tutorial series for beginners and in this one we're going to be talking about a specific module that's built into Python called time. So let's just go ahead and get straight into it. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to save it and I'm going to call it time. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to import time, that's the module we're using. And there's a lot of cool things that you can do with time. So for example, we could just print the current time. So to do that we do time dot time. And I'll also wrap this in a print statement so that you can see the output. So I'll go and save and run that. And then this is the current time. But what this is, is because it might look slightly unusual to you, is it's a Unix timestamp, which means it's the number of seconds from the beginning of time. And the beginning of time in computers and technology is the 1st of January 1970 at zero minutes, zero hours, zero seconds or that. So that's when it started counting and that is the amount of seconds that has passed since that, since that time. But since that's not particularly useful, what we can do is do ask time instead of just time.time .time, and then we get a slightly more usable sort of time, or so it might seem. It's a lot more readable. So that's one example of how you can use that and, and present it in a slightly better way. Another example is you could do the Greenwich Mean Time method and what that's going to do is print out this funny looking thing which is, it might seem slightly more ugly at first than this, but actually this is a specific type of data called a struct time and it's more usable because we can extract certain parts of that data out of this funny looking format. So the way we can do that is if instead of printing this we assign a variable we could say now is equal to this time dot Greenwich Mean Time and to access one particular bit of this data we could do now and then we use the index so then we could do so if we wanted the year we could do 2016 that would just be zero so I'm gonna print that and save and run and then we just get the one specific part of the data within this funny looking format so one good thing about this format as well is it's really easy to convert straight back to this nice looking format here. So let's say we have this Greenwich Mean Time. If we now, I'm just going to take this index out. So what we get when we run that is the same thing we had before. If we now do now is equal to time dot local time. In fact, sorry, time dot ask time now that gives us the same readable output because it's converted this funny format into a nice readable format so that's a really nice uh, way of presenting the data another thing that you can do is you could do start is equal to time dot time so remember the time dot time is just going to give us a uh, number of seconds that has elapsed since 1970 and what I can do at the end is say stop is equal to time dot time and then what I've sort of done is I can use these two start stop variables to time how long this code in between is going to take to run so what I can do now is print the difference between those two times so stop is going to be a larger amount of seconds so I'm going to do stop minus start hopefully that sort of makes sense and when we run that we see that this time here has taken 0.02696 etc etc seconds to execute these three lines of code here another example of how you can use the time module is the time.sleep so if we do time.sleep what this will do, not slep, 
What this does is it takes a parameter which is the number of seconds that you want the program to stop before it then carries on executing. So we could just do three seconds and then it's going to pause for three seconds when it gets this sleep method and it's going to then carry on executing the program. So now you see we get three seconds plus what it took to do this code. So that's a little bit on the time module in Python. I hope you enjoyed that and it, I hope you found that useful. In the next one we're going to be talking about another module in Python called the OS module.